Okay, this is part three of SketchUp Pad, and in this part I'm going to start drawing the motor mount itself, the part that I actually want to fit to the motorcycle frame. The first thing I'm going to do, in the last one I did a sanity check with these holes, and I'm going to again group these parts and right click and group, again so that they don't interact with anything else. And now for the mount, I'm actually going to go to the mount layer, so click there. I want to zoom out, and I want to put the center of the motor at the origin. This just makes everything uh, easier to draw, in my experience. So I'm going to select everything, hit M for the move tool, come in and find that intersection in the middle, and just move it over to the origin where it snaps. All right, perfect. All right, now I can zoom back in. You'll notice this intersection isn't exactly in the center here. I think that's just a, a little bit of perspective that the picture is showing you. So I'm not going to trust these circles that I drew. I'm actually going to draw my own circle on my, my own bolt hole circle. So I'm in the mount layer. Uh, so everything I do um, is independent of the copy layer. So I can actually go in and remove the copy layer by just uh, unchecking that. I'll leave it on for now. What I'm going to do is grab the circle tool, go to the center, this intersection, and start drawing my circle. Now if you can see this, this circle is actually kind of jagged. And that's because it only has 24 sides to it. I want to make it a little bit smoother so that it's more accurate. Um, and the way I do that is I'm going to make it 96 sides instead, which is 20, 24 times 4. The way you do that is just start typing 96 and S, and you can see it shows up in the box in the lower right. That tells it 96 sides. Hit Enter. Now it has 96. And now I know from the part diagram that the radius of this bolt hole circle is 74.6 millimeters. So I just type that, 74.6 enter and there we go I have an exact bolt hole circle now the reason I drew this circle and use instead of using these ones that I drew originally if I zoom in you'll see it's actually off by a little bit there so the next thing I'm going to do is draw some lines that will intersect this circle and tell me where my bolt holes actually are so again I start at the middle and I'm tracing along this line so that I get the rotation angle of the motor correct. I'm going to come out here and see SketchUp wants to snap to these endpoints, so I'm going to go beyond there. When I go beyond there, I get a purple line. Purple usually means SketchUp is trying to follow some other line, either parallel or per perpendicular. In this case, it's going parallel to a line that's already there, and that's really helpful. So I just click outside of here, and now I have a line that's the same as the line that's in the copy layer. So now I can erase the copy or remove the copy layer and now I have just um, my original lines. I'm going to bring it back just for reference. I'm going to get rid of this extra piece of line by using the eraser tool. Click that. OK. Now I'm going to draw some more lines. Here's one and again I get my purple line and that's telling me that it's perpendicular to an edge. So I'm going to accept that. Except it doesn't look like it's lined up with this other line. So I'm going to get rid of the copy layer. I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to try again. See what it was perpendicular to. I want it to be perpendicular to this line. There we go. So I get a purple line, and that is telling me that it's perpendicular to the other line. So I go beyond. All right, now I hit E for erase. Get rid of that line. Now I'm going to go do the other two. This one is parallel. And this one is perpendicular. All right, and now I've got intersections. One, two, three, four intersections where my bolt holes are going to go. I'm going to bring the copy layer back just to double check where I am. All right, good. 
So now what I want to do is I'm actually going to draw the holes at these points. And here I'm going to do the trick where I group these things so that they don't inter interact with the next parts that I draw. Now, when I say interact, I mean they won't intersect and cut each other, but I can still find these intersections. So if I hit C and try to draw a circle, it will still find that endpoint. And that's actually the endpoint where that line went to. Now, I know that these bolt holes are 3 eighths of an inch. Right now I'm in millimeters, and I could convert 3 eighths to millimeters. Um, I could use a calculator and do that. Um, but I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to come back to model info. And now I'm going to select inches. Since the diameter is 3 eighths, that means the radius is 3 sixteenths. So if I click this and start drawing my circle, I can then type 3 slash 16, 3 sixteenths. You'll see that show up in the box down in the lower right and hit enter. And that makes a 3 eighths inch diameter hole for me. Now I can only hit 3 sixteenths. So the same thing here, 3 slash 3 sixteen. All right, so now I have all my circles. And the nice thing about having this piece grouped is that if I wanted to, I could grab it and move it out of the way. And you see it doesn't interact with those other circles because it's its own group. All right, now I need to go get these other holes. And I'm going to switch back to millimeters because that's what I prefer to work in. So I'm going to zoom in to this one. Draw a circle as close as I can get to the center. That looks pretty good. It's trying to tell me it's 3.6 millimeter radius. I'm going to guess that's actually an 8 millimeter hole. So I'm going to hit 4. So that's an 8 millimeter hole. And I'm going to come down to this one. Draw another circle. And again, 4 millimeter hole. SketchUp is remembering I did 4 last time, so it thinks I need, want to do 4 again, and that's correct, I do. Alright, now I have the holes for my motor, and I have the holes where the mount is going to go, and so I don't need this anymore, so I'm just going to click it and hit delete and get rid of it. Now the center of my motor is still the origin here, so I can still use that to line things up. So if I want to draw a line, say, I can just go to the origin and draw a line from the origin. So what I'm going to do next is draw a circle that will be part of my motor mount. So I'm going to draw it and bring it up so it's a little bigger than my holes. Uh, it want, it says that's about 88. I'm just going to make it a 100 millimeter radius. Now these holes over here, um, I'm going to draw circles from them. Let's make this one 30 or 15 millimeter radius. And let's make this one also, let's just say 15. Now what I want to do is I want to draw a line that connects these. So I'm going to find a spot here that looks like it's about tangent and draw it from there to this other circle, also tangent. I could zoom in and get really, really accurate with these just for demonstration. I'm eyeballing it. Here's another one that's going to be tangent. And one more right here. All right, so now I've got my part, the outside lines of my part. I'm going to take the eraser tool and get rid of these inside lines. Two. I'm just erasing all these. The last thing I want to do is put a circle in the middle. And that circle is going to be um, for this raised piece that's in the motor. And 
I think that piece is four inches in diameter. So I'm going to take this over here and I'm just going to hit two. Now, even though I'm in millimeters mode, if I want to do inches, I type two and quote or two inches and now it'll do two inches. So hit enter. Now I have a hole there. Now I'm just going to select that, hit delete. That looks good. So that's my motor mount. That's my part drawn with all the holes in it and it's ready to go. And the next thing I would do is start drawing dimensions um, so that somebody could from a machine shop could take this and actually make my part. And that'll be similar to what I was doing before. Grab the dimension tool and just start finding the centers and draw those dimensions in. Now another thing you might want to do if somebody's going to take this to a CNC um, at least this is the way the CNC works that I have uh, or have access to. I use this tool um, which is a little label tool or text label tool. What's nice about it is that you can draw text labels so like if I grab right here and um, and pull off to the side I can type whatever I want in there. Blah. And click away and it draws blah. I don't want blah. What I want is where these locations actually are. So I don't need the picture up there anymore. I'm going to get rid of that layer. So what I'm going to do is I need to find the locations of these circles. So in order to do that I need to draw like a little crosshairs in there. So I'm going to zoom in and I don't I'm actually going to get rid of that because I just need the circle, not the background piece. So I'm going to hit L for a line, circle around, and find the center. There's the center, and I'm going to make my crosshairs 2 millimeters. All right, now that I have those, I can use my text tool or my text label tool. If I find the intersection there, then when I pull off to the side, what you see it doing is it's actually giving me the location of that point. So it says the location of that point is minus 180, 0, minus 0 .00, 0 .04. That's uh, x, y, z coordinates. So I'm going to just keep two of these. I'm going to delete the one in the middle because we don't need that. Put parentheses around it and click away. So now it's saying that this that center is at this coordinate and if this is my zero then when a CNC shop programs this in they can just program in that that circle right there is at this coordinate and they'll be ready to go. So some other things you might want to do are tell them the radius of, say, this arc right here. For that, you want this dimension tool. Grab the arc. Pull away. It tells you it's 15 millimeter radius. Um, and that's basically it. You just um, use the label tool and the dimension tool and go around and mark all the points that a machine shop would need in order to make this part and then send it off to them and you'll be done. The last thing you'll want to do once this is all ready to go is go to File, Export, 2D Graphic and it will let you export this as just a regular image. Uh, it can be a PNG or uh, JPEG, whatever you want. I'm going to choose PNG, hit Export and now it's sent this out and it's a uh, image that I could print off and send to someone. That's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful.